Okay, welcome. Let me know if you can hear me, everyone. Good afternoon. Yeah, Melissa. Well, so before we get started, I just I just want to be uh, to clear, or I just want to be clear. First, let's do another sound check and screen check. Can everybody see Melissa's screen again? Great. Okay. And then um, because we're starting a little bit late, Melissa, it's um, you should have started 15 minutes ago. Uh, I, I don't want to take away anything from your content. We'll cut into our 15 minute break between speakers. So you have, if you want it, uh, until uh, 145. So um, again, I, I'm sure you've scheduled other things for the day. So I don't want to throw off your schedule too much, but I just want to let you know you've got the full hour and 15 minutes that we promised. Um, I just want to make sure that um, everyone gets uh, the maximum value out of your presentation. So with that, uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself and get started as soon as you're ready. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dan. And thank you, everyone, for coming. And thank you for having me, Winvesting. It's good to be here. It's my first time lecturing here today. So again, as Dan said, my name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh LLC. Today, I'm going to talk about how to make $100,000 a year shorting stocks that gap in just 30 minutes a day. And the time element there is actually very important for the specific strategy that I'm going to talk about today, which is how I train, which is gap trading. If you're interested in more information after the webinar today, you can go to my website. It's www.thestockswoosh.com. And you can also feel free to email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com as well if you have any questions after we're done today. You can also go to all of my social media pages and follow me there. I have a large presence on YouTube. I put a lot of market reviews on YouTube and a lot of other webinars that I've done in the past there as well if you want to follow me. So let's get right into the nitty gritty here. First of all, is it possible to make $100,000 a year in the market as a trader? I, I'm a day trader. So let's just be clear right out of the gate. The type of trading that I do is, a, is day trading. I am flat every day by 4 o'clock Eastern time. Now, the strategy I'm going to talk about can be used for overnights, but that is not how I particularly trade and not the topic for today. I'm talking about actually making $100,000 a year as a day trader, meaning you're done, you know what you made by 4 o'clock, boom, that's it. You're flat each day. And then you start every day, again, brand new at 9.30. So it is possible to make this kind of money in the market. And it's really not that much if you think about how much money runs through the market on a daily basis. And actually, if you even break it down in the 30-minute time frame that we're going to talk about today, the maximum profit potential that exists to make money in the market happens within the open, between 9.30 and 10. So not only is it possible to make $100,000 a year day trading, the maximum time frame to make this kind of money happens into that open period where the most money, the majority of the influx of order flow happens in that first 30-minute period. Okay? So I just want to be clear about that. We're going to talk about this more as we go on. Now, a lot of people ask me this, so I thought I'd talk about it right out of the gate. How much to risk to make $100,000 a year? If you want to make $100,000 a year, I'm breaking it down here. You could start out on different levels, meaning if you wanted to start out and grow your account, you could start out risking a certain amount of money to work up to it. But if you break it down, it's $500 a day. $500 a day or $2,500 a week is $130,000 a year. It's very reasonable. These are reasonable, reasonable amounts of money to make. I call it chunking it out. But that's really how you have to look at it. It's not about having, hitting some huge home run trade every single solitary day. It's about chunking it out and then moving up the levels. $300 a day is $1,500 a week. This is so reasonable. And that actually is, you know, $6,000 a month, okay? Whether this is extra money or you're doing it for uh, something on the side or you want to be a full-time trader, that's seventy-eight thousand dollars a year. Now that's not a hundred thousand, but that's pretty darn close. It means you're 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 getting there, and three hundred dollars a day. It, that's just that's so reasonable. And we're going to talk about this more. And I'm talking about reasonable, meaning a goal that is achievable with a certain amount of risk that is not insane. Okay. I'm trying to get it to bring it down to be relatable to most people because everybody thinks, well, you have to risk so much to make this much. No, you don't. Okay. To be able to make $39,000 a year in extra income is actually really, really good. And that's only $150 a day. And if you want to do this part-time, it's very reasonable too. And that's even the smallest amount of risk or what I would consider a beginner risk. But we're going to focus today on making $100,000 a year. And I just wanted to show you 
that it breaks down to being very, very reasonable and therefore certainly achievable. You need to chunk it out and set your goals per day, per week, and per month. That is how you do it. No one day will make or break you as a trader in either direction unless you let yourself fall off the deep end with losses, which doesn't happen to me because I'm very specific with what I do. I only probably take one or two trades a day. That is also one of the reasons that I'm very successful. I'm focused and honed in on quality. I, I never take something like seven, eight, nine, ten trades a day. Like that, I can't even remember the last time I even took that many trades a day. It probably was right at the beginning. At novices tend to over trade and you're racking up commissions when you do that and nobody wins. And I found that the biggest days that I've ever had as a trader were always when I did actually one trade and in one stock symbol. So if you can make $100,000 a year trading, you can do it as your full-time job, and it is very possible because of the amount of money that flows into the market. Now, let me just look at some questions here. We're going to talk about that later, the capital. Somebody asked about the capital. Let's wait till we get the trade examples about that, okay? We're, we'll be there shortly. Stay with me. I won't forget that question. Now, if you want to become a full-time day trader, which is what I am, you can work from home. I work from home. I live in Manhattan, and it's wonderful, particularly in the wintertime. But actually, it's nice really now. It's the spring. It's gorgeous out. And I trade the morning, and I'm done, and I have the whole afternoon to myself, and I live in a beautiful city. So it is very convenient. If you are a, a stay-at-home parent, it, you know, it's convenient. You can make extra money. If you have a business where you can trade and then uh, schedule your business meetings or your work schedules after this time of the day, which would be after 10 a.m. Eastern time, it's very convenient. It's a, it's a very nice lifestyle or extra type of income to make this type of trading that I'm talking about. Not just day trading, but this type of trading because you're done really quick. And the trade either works for a dozen and then you're done. And you can do it from home. And you can also do it anywhere in the world. You can do it anywhere in the world. Half my clients actually are out of the U.S. I have an international business. And, you know, they found me online. We, this is the Internet age, okay? So you can do it anywhere. And a lot of people love to trade the U.S. stock market because of the volatility and the momentum and the money that's in the U.S. stock market. It's, it's appealing to people all over the planet. I have clients in China and Australia and everywhere, okay? It is appealing to people all over the world because of the amount of money that flows in and out of the U.S. stock market. And it only takes a few hours a week to do it, which is a great benefit. So how can you make $100,000 a year trading? And are you specific enough with what you were doing? Now, let me just see here. There's a question. <laughs> Someone said they couldn't live in Manhattan with $100,000 a year income. Exactly. But that's this. we're going to focus here on the topic today. At the end, I am going to talk about some advanced ex risk examples just for you, uh, for the person that, you know, answered that question. But that's true. Actually, if you live in L.A. or London or Tokyo or any large city in the world, $100,000 a year would not barely pay your rent. That is true. But today we're going to focus on this, okay? Now, are you specific enough with what you are doing? Many traders are all over the place. They're out there like in this sea that is the market because that's what the market is. It's a sea. And you just have to feed yourself for the one day. So you got to go and you just got to get that one fish. Okay, that's how, that's how I look at it. And you're trying to get the biggest fish, the fattest fish, the biggest one, the juiciest one that you can get. And if you can get that one, it may last you a couple of days. It may last you one day, but you always are looking for the one fish because that's all you need. One fish will feed you for the night. If you're out there and you're spreading yourself out like a crazy person trying to do thing after thing after thing after thing after thing, and this means opposite directional bias. This also means with the trend against the trend. It also means options, features, forex, stocks. It also means shorting and going long. It means doing a million different types of things. Also, strategies within that, it's too much. And you're lost in a sea. You drown as one individual. Because remember, you are one tiny little person in the market. And even I am, even with the size that I trade. So I recognize my position in the sea. And I try to go after something and just grab the fish and be done. So the philosophy, again, with the time of the day is you just need the one fish. You go and you try to find the best fish, and you take it, and you're done. And if you're not specific enough with what you're doing, you're going to have a hard time finding 
one fish and you're going to drown. So what helps you to focus? Well, one of the things that I do and I love to do and helps me focus is I'm looking for shorts. Now let's talk about shorting and the concept of shorting before we specifically talk about the strategy. This is a great picture, by the way. This is how people feel when they're in a long position and they are in it and they're long to stop. Okay, this is people are in long stocks overnight. They're long to stop and they get up the next day. They were up money. It's Monday. They were up. Tuesday morning, they get up. They were in the long position. They're still in the long position. Tuesday morning, they get up. They're not up money anymore. Not only are they not up, they are down. Okay, and then this is what those people look like. They're scared, they're in fear, they're panicking. What do they do? They were in this position maybe for weeks and they were up, but they didn't take it off because they wanted to go X, Y, Z, or they thought it was a good trade or whatever the case may be. And so then the panic sets in, the fear sets in. The concept of shorting is that you are shorting a stock. And I'm going to talk about this in detail in a moment. So don't lose me here. But you're shorting it and you are like betting that the people are going to sell from the concept of the panic and the fear, okay? And it, it's real. I mean, this isn't something like that I made up yesterday. This is a real concept and something that really exists in the universe of the market. People are in long positions that they are profitable in, sometimes for days, sometimes for weeks, sometimes for months, sometimes for years. The stocks gap against them, and I'll discuss what that is in a moment, and then they're all of a sudden not up. They are down, okay? Now, let's talk about shorting. What do I mean? This is a chart. This is a daily chart of HPQ. So, now I was talking about gaps. This is a strategy I trade. Again, we're going to talk about this in more detail in a bit. But since we're talking about a chart, I just want to show you. A gap is when a stock closes the night before at one price at 4 o'clock. That's when the U.S. market closes. It has a closed time. And then it opens the next day at 9.30 at a different price point. The differential doesn't make any difference here, okay? But it gapped. So whether it gapped a little or a lot or whatever, it's different. Meaning that the stock closed up here, for example, maybe at 38.65, and then it opened at a different price. Let's just say 35.45. So it closed here at 4 o'clock and at 9.30 opened at a different price, okay? So that is the concept of a gap. Now, on the live day, what happens is that, again, this is HPQ. This is a candlestick. This is Japanese candlesticks. The stock sold off in the day. The red depicts the selling and shorting action that comes into the stock. So the red means the stock price went down in the day. So you could have shorted the stock on the day and made money to the downside. If you had tried to buy it, you would not have made money. If you were shorting it, you would have made money. Okay? Now, can you shorten a bullish market? The answer is yes. I don't want to get off topic here about the overall general market. This is a clip of the market from this morning. Market was bearish today in the trading action and yesterday. But you can short in a bearish market and a bullish market. I created my system to short in a bullish market, which has, was over the last seven years, of course, the last seven years I've been trading. But you can short in a bullish market and a bearish market. Now, I don't want to get too off topic. The market is still in an uptrend. It's still holding. I know we fell the last two days. It doesn't change anything in the overall trend here. But if the market would turn or when the market turns, which is not right now, but it is going to at some point, when that happens, then I will be in a great position because I know how to short very well. And anyone that's learned how to trade with me or is trading with me will be in a great position too. Uh, for some reason, a lot of traders don't know how to short correctly. I don't know why. And even ones that do think they know how to, but they don't know how to correctly to be consistently profitable to the downside. There is an edge in shorting. This is, again, one of the reasons I'm successful with this. And we're going to talk about some examples today. But the concept, okay, for some, a lot of people is hard to understand. And even those that understand it don't really understand it when they're taking the position to do it of what's happening in the stock itself. And I tried to explain it there with the panic idea. And we'll go over some examples here today. But th it's real, okay? This, it's, this is real, real, real. When you're, when you're, whether somebody loves a stock or hates a stock or they love a company or they hate a company, there's emotions involved, okay? Like something could go up and rally, okay? Because 
people love it, or great news happened, or whatever the case may be. I don't care about the reason why things do whatever they do. I don't look at that. But I'm telling you that the conceptual idea of things, people making decisions based on emotions is real. Whether the emotions are uplifting or depressing, where the panic comes in. So if you understand how to read that correctly, in reference to buying and selling or shorting, then you can use that to profit in the market. Now, let me look here as a question. Uh, someone is saying you can, can you use this to do options. You can, but I don't know about what you're talking about, about IRAs. You're gonna have to ask your accountant about some of these particular tax questions or the broker about some of these questions. Someone else just asked about how much money you need to, to actually trade. I'm not a broker or an accountant, so I don't want to answer questions if I'm not an expertise in those. I'm an expertise in trading, uh, not on those other questions. So you'll have to refer to a broker for the amount of money you need to put in an account or a tax accountant for the IRA. Now someone is asking about what time frame. We, I use a lot of time frames. We're going to talk about that, the ones I use here. But right now we're just talking about the daily chart, but I use them all, okay? Now let's talk about shorting and making money trading. You are seeing the stock, okay, and you are almost like betting that it's going to go down when you're deciding to take the short. It has to do with the focus. One individual can trade the market successfully as a career with a dependable method. So how are you going to get that? You have to have the focus on the method. In order to reap the rewards that the market has to offer, you need a quality system to follow. The central structure to trading results must be a strategy with a solid foundation that is based on accurately reading price action. Why? Because the price action, which is what you're seeing depicted in, in the Japanese candlesticks, is going to tell you whether or not the stock is going to get bought or fall from selling. The other powerful factor in being consistently profitable is having an edge, and shorting gives a trader an edge. I don't know how many people out there are short, but I know that if I took a poll of the people that do, very few of them do it well. Some people don't like to short rallies. Some people only short if it immediately drops. I mean, there's a million different things that people like to do or don't do well that short. It's one of those things, like anything else, you have to understand how to read it correctly. And if you learn it, you can do it correctly and it will give you an edge. Now, as I said, the market is bullish, but there will be a day when the market turns bearish. And then if you don't know how to short, even if you're successful now, and even if you've been successful for the last few years while the market has been rallying, you won't be in that environment. So you've got to have a strategy that works in both market environments. And if you do, you can make money in any market environment, bullish or bearish. The strategy that I do, even though it's shorting, even though we're in a bullish market, works in a bullish market. I created it and such, and will work in a bearish market because the idea of the panic is real in any environment because it's specific on the focus of the stock. I'm trading stocks, companies. Now, you can use this for ETFs like the QQQs or the SPY or other ETFs if you want, but I love stocks. And I love stocks individually in the US market because of the idea that people are emotionally attached, okay, to stocks. Like, people love Apple, okay, for example. It's a good example. Many traders don't know how to short or won't, and even if the ones that do, Many stink at it, and, and I'm just going to say the truth, they stink at it. Now, let me just look here at some questions here. I just had a few of them. Again, the options, you can do options, but you have to know how to do options. I'm not going to teach you how to do options. I've been trading this method for seven years. And we'll go, we'll go through all, I'm getting some specific questions here about profitable trades. We'll talk about that more at the end. We'll talk about that more at the end, okay? I don't want to get too off topic here at the beginning. Now, who shorts? Some insiders indicate that it takes a certain type of person to short stocks. Many short sellers have been depicted as pessimists who are rooting for a company's failure, but they've also been described as disciplined and confident in their judgment. I would describe me as the latter. Also, who shorts? Wealthy, sophisticated investors, hedge funds, large institutions, and day traders. And that would be me. Okay. And I would consider myself also a sophisticated investor trader because of the fact that I've been doing this now for seven years. Now, in the life of most people that are in the market, seven years maybe isn't a long time. I've taught people in my class that have, are, you know, have been trading longer than I am alive. 
But the fact is, I'm very, very good at this one thing. And I've made it a, a focus since the beginning to get good at this. And I realized a long, long time ago, very quickly, that you cannot be a jack of all trades and a master of none to make money in the market. It's really not impossible to make a lot of money in the market as a day trader. But it is a lot for a lot of people because they just simply don't understand that they need to have a focus. Like you can have a day where you lose money in one trade and you can't give up on your system. That doesn't mean the system doesn't work if you have a loss on one day. You have to have what I call conviction. Okay. And that comes through learning the right information and the process over time. And I have a lot of conviction in shorting. Now, short selling is the selling of a stock that the seller doesn't own. More specifically, a short sale is a sale of a security that isn't owned by the seller, but it is promised to be delivered. That may sound confusing, but it's actually a very simple concept. Now, when you short sell a stock, your broker will lend it to you. The stock will come from the broker's own inventory, from another one of the firm's customers, or from another brokerage firm. The shares are sold, and the proceeds are credited to your account. Sooner or later, you must have to close a short. Again, I close all my shorts by 4 o'clock. By buying back the same number of shares, it's called covering. Okay, I call buy to covering when I take it out and returning them to the broker. If the price drops, you can buy back the stock at the lower price and make a profit of the difference. If the price of the stock rises, you have to buy back at the higher price and you lose. Now, I use hard stops. We were going to talk about this in a little bit here, too. And then I think that'll answer some of the questions that some people are, are, talk, are asking me here. Now, what is a short? Panic. Here's a good example. The CAG. Now, look what happened with this one. The stock closed here the night before at 36.40. Opened the next day down here at 9.30. Remember, this is 4 o'clock. This is a day chart. Opened down here at 9.30 and sold off on the day. If you had shorted this, you would have made money because you were betting that the stock would go lower, and it did. Now, let's talk about the panic. Do you see here that this happened? Boom. Right in the next day. And then look what happened the next day. So literally from the day before the gap, because remember we talked about a gap is when it closes here and opens at a different price. That's what happened. Again, it doesn't, rem it doesn't matter about the size of this. Now, look at the panic. The stock closed up here at 36.40 within two business days by 4 o'clock Eastern time on the day over here. This is the 17th. This was over the weekend, actually. This was from the Thursday, Friday, Monday. But from into the next day, the second day down, look at the amount of loss of the stock. Look at what it did. It just collapsed off the planet. I call it falling off a cliff. But really, from one night here to the next day here, look at that. The stock lost $3. That's major, okay? Almost 10% of the value of the stock of that actual stock, okay? That's a lot, okay? That's what I mean by the panic concept. Now, what happens in shorts? It's fear and panic. People are in long positions and then they're down and then they need to sell and you're shorting on the selling action. Panic sets in very fast, which is why you can make the money quickly into the open, okay? And you've got to become an expert. So you have to take advantage of what you see when you see this happening in the stock. Now, when you do something like this, like I said, I day trade this. So in the HPQ, I day traded it and I shorted the stock on the day and I was flat by 4 o'clock. But I just want to show you, I showed you the CAG. Do you see what also can happen? Someone was asking about the options. Here's where if you did an option on the day of the HPQ that I just day traded it here. Do you see what this did here now? This is a month after the fact. So you would have to know how to do the option, or you would do a swing trade, or a longer term core trade, which you can do short. And do you see where it went in here? This has moved $5 plus. Okay, now you had to be in it for a month. We're going to get back to talking about this because this is what I do as a day trader. I've been just showing here as far as options or longer term trades. You can short in overnight. And this isn't a bullish market. Okay? It has to do with the quality of the pick. And the pick in this case is HPQ. When I say pick, I mean the stock. Now, if HPQ is trading at 3536 and it drops under 3536, then the only way to make money in the stock is to short it. 
You are betting, okay? I'm just saying the word betting because it's a good term to use here because you're betting it. You're betting that the stock will go down when you take the position in the trade, short. You are taking the trade betting it will go under the 35.36. So you can make money. Anywhere under that price, you're up money. If you, if you go long it and the stock price drops under the 35.36, you will lose money. Do you understand? So the concept is you are looking to get the 35.36 to go underneath itself down, whatever the number is. And I'm not going to talk about targets today. That'd be too much to go over. Now, how do you find shorts? This is one from today. This is new, okay, N-U-E. This is actually a 15-minute chart. Again, I use many, many different time frames. But this is a stock that gapped down this morning. You can find them anywhere. You can find them on scanners that you have yourself. You can uh, buy a scanner. There's free scanners on your platforms. So it's not that hard to find them. Okay, they're all over the place that happen every single solitary day in the market. Stocks gap. You have bullish gaps and you have bearish gaps. Okay, today we're going to talk about bearish gaps though, and we're talking about shorting. But it's easy to find them. You can find them on your, on your actual platform. Now, after I find them, I use a 26-point checklist to determine which gap pick, which pick, which stock symbol that I want to trade. So that's the next step. And the philosophy behind the 26 points is I'm looking for something that has a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. For the purpose of this system, I'm looking to short. So I want to short something that's going to have a high probability of dropping all day. I'm also looking for something that has potential for a big move on the day. And I'm also looking for early confirmation of the bias, which is to the downside, and the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m., which is like when I like to take my positions. I'm also looking for precise entries with follow-through and a good risk to reward. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. Now, why trade bearish gaps? Large institutional money. It, it's large institutional money that actually makes the gaps in the first place. So I'm explaining to you why the stocks are gapping and what makes the gap and what makes them fall through to the downside. This was QCOM. This was back from months ago. But it had a massive, massive, massive gap. The stock closed the night before. Again, this is a 15-minute chart. All the way up here at 71-something and opened the next day around 65-something. So this got pummeled in the gap, and I still shorted it. Now, some traders might have thought to buy it to fill the gap. I'm not going to go uh, too off topic today why I don't do that concept. But in any event, this was not a long, it was a short. And it nowhere near filled this gap. And so you would have looked to short this on the day. But I want to show you this idea of the institutions making the gap in the first place. That's how you're getting the profitable, profitable type of momentum and volatility within that 30 minutes, okay? Because institutions are in the market and they're the, what move stocks. They make the gaps and they move the stocks on the live day for you to make money. It's all about precision and detail. Accuracy counts and trading on all fronts. Quality strategy, good risk to reward. you got to have the right entry, correct size, and the proper exit counts too. Although I would say this is really last on my list, I'm most focused on the pick and I'm most focused on the right entry. I get the best entry in everything I trade. If it doesn't work out, I'm out immediately. And if it goes under work, I have the best entry of the stock for the price I can have ever. I trade very aggressively into the open on a one-minute chart, which we're going to talk about today. But I know what I'm doing, and I am teaching people what I'm doing. And I run a live trading room where I call the trades to say where to take it. And I have everything figured out ahead of, the t ahead of time. I get up out of bed in the morning early. You could start at 8 o'clock, 8.30. I start looking at stuff at 7 a.m. Eastern time, even though I don't start trading until 9.30. So the prep time and the focus and the precision and the detail of everything I've figured out ahead of time is what gives me an edge as well because I know exactly what I want to do. I have 100% conviction. I go after the train. I go into the motion and I get my fish, and I'm ready to get the fish. I'm standing there ready to get the fish as soon as the fish pops up. Understand it? So being successful in the market takes detail and a certain level of precision. Detail matters. It can make a difference in you making a lot of money one day or losing them one day. So you have to learn what to do, and you have to learn when to do it. Now, let's take a look and see at some trades here. Again, it's about having this trained eye of really knowing what to look for. Because a trained eye counts, if you want to see what something's going to do, 
This is the new from today. If you see that the stock from where it opened dropped down in here and fell off a planet. Talk about fall off a planet. High of the day was approximately around 40, you know, 46 something or whatever. And it dropped and fell all the way down and almost went to $45 in the morning. Kind of bounced off of 45, 50 ish. But you would have had to get this trade here in the morning at the time frame that I trade. And if you didn't get this, here's the whole down move. You see it? Boom, boom, boom. This is right into the first 30 minutes. You've got to focus on where the momentum is and institutions take positions on or off in stocks in that first 30 minutes. Okay? That is the reality of how the system is set up. And many times they've figured out what they're going to do before, before the market even opens. So the order may not come in until after 930, but they know that they want to sell out of the stock on the day, on the live day. So then the order's placed very quickly into the open. I'm talking about hedge funds, institutions that are deciding things that make these momentums. So that's a lot of times why you have something and if you don't take it quickly, it's all over because they just did what they had to do with the one position and that was it. Okay. Now, this was one back from earlier earlier this year. This is STX. Again, another beautiful gap. The stock closed up here the night before, gap down here and dropped. Had another red move in here in the day. Look at that one, too. See the nice idea of the panic? Again, this is another one you could have done an option in, okay? But I like to do the day trades, and you could have done this one here on, too. Now, let's talk about the short in STX. We're on a one-minute chart now. The previous one was a daily. This is a one-minute chart. So you're looking to get in the stock here within this first 30-minute period. And you're also looking to get out of it quickly, too. Now, in this case, we'll talk about it. It did keep going and did go to the dream target if you wanted to hold into it for a while. But if you like to do the quick morning moves, which is what I like, you were out of this fast. Now, all the examples today we're going to go over are intermediate risk looking to make the goal of 100000 a year. This is not an advanced risk. It is what I consider an intermediate risk, which is $300. The entry price of the trade in the STX was $60.25. You would have shorted it. I'll go back in a minute. Just follow me here. The risk was $0.30. Cents. So on 1,000 shares, you would have risked $300 because I put a hard stop in. What does that mean? It means I put it in the limit order with a hard stop. If it kicks me out at the price 30 cents above this, then I'm out of it and I'd be down the money that I was out of it. If this trader here is an intermediate, he risked $300 and he was able to take 1,000 shares. He exited at the first target immediately, very quickly. It happened within 20 minutes at 59.75 and he made 500 bucks. Okay? So this is a decent trade for a quick one. Now, if he wanted to hold the whole thing to the dream target, he was in it more than 30 minutes, but I'm pointing it out. He could have carried it on through and never went back near his initial price of 60.25, by the way. Dream target was 58 bucks. It did go there, and he could have made $2,250, risking 300. That's an amazing trade. It's a 7.5 R risk. Now, when I look at making money in U.S. stocks, it's not about a percentage because I'm not an investor. I'm holding them long term, okay? where it's taking up and sucking up my buying power, my money, holding the position long term. It is about using the buying power that I have in the account temporarily on the day to take the position, okay? In which case of the STX, you would have needed 60000 um, a little bit over of BP in your account. That doesn't mean you needed $60,000, but that's how much buying power you would have needed. And then if you're at a retail broker, you divide it by four for the cash equivalent, and if you're at a prop place, a lot of the prop places give 10 to 1 but DP. You don't even need that much. You can divide 60 by 10. That answers, I think, the buying power question someone had asked me. Now, let's go back here. This is a lot of money to make in a trade, but I'm just showing you with a $300 risk in one trade, if you did hold it, obviously this is your, your money for the week then. If your goal is to make $2,500 a week, you just made your goal for the week in one trade. If your goal is to make $500 a day and chunk it out, you made it. You made the $500 that you needed right in here. And you're, on, you're, you're, you're doing it every day. And you're chunking it out. So it's not insane. This is a great trade, though, if you held it. Time and trade was very quick for the first one. Let's go back. So you would have shorted this here. Here's the first drop. You're just all out. You're all at the first drop. Or you take it here, and if you don't have another job to go to, 
I can stay and watch it, manage the trade. You can keep lowering the stop. It goes all the way down to 58. And it does do it in a reasonable time frame. You didn't have to be in this till 4 o'clock. It did drop hard still before the lunchtime period. Okay. Any questions about this? Okay. I'm going to keep going then. I don't see any, any current questions here, so I'm going to keep talking. Now, let's talk about the next one here. This is from today. This one here is NUE. The stock gap down today. And again, oh, maybe somebody did have a question. Hold on. No. Okay. Uh, the stock gap down today and fell. Again, it has nothing to do with the stop, uh, the size here. Okay. You're just looking here to see that it gap. It closed up here at 47.50 and opened down here around 46 something. See it? So it's just about the idea that it actually did gap. Okay. Oh, here we have a question. Are the straight lines a standard or a custom indicator? I will answer the lines. I'm seeing here now, I did miss some questions. I'm sorry, this is just so, I'm seeing a lot of questions and it's really small chats. This, this is a 200 per moving average. This is an 8 per moving average. This is a 20 per moving average. This is a 50 per moving average. This is just the computer figures it out on the platform automatically. Down here's the volume and then I have the Japanese candlesticks. I have very clean charts. I like to keep my charts very clean. I don't use fancy indicators. I find them a distraction. And you can't rely on them to trade anyways. So I have them here, but I don't live and die by these things, and I don't make decisions by them either. I find that if there was something that was out there that was an indicator that told me what was the right thing to do, even 55% of the time, I'd have it. It's not such a thing. And we would all have it, actually, and then it wouldn't work. So this idea of buying... Uh, you know, types of systems that have indicators that are going to tell you what to do. I don't believe in it. I don't trade like that. I'm very old fashioned in the method that I trade. That's probably one of the reasons I'm successful. I, I trade in an electronic world that is to date, which is I can take a fast order in the market by pressing a button in and out in the electronic world that we live in. I rely on ECNs and market makers to fill my orders. And I rely on the broker, and I rely on a platform system, and I rely on the internet to function. But as far as making my decisions about stocks, I'm looking at the price when I make a decision. I know that that is the number one most important thing for me, and it should be in anything that you decide. I don't use indicators. And sometimes people's charts, I see they look like a planetary solar system. I, I, I don't know anyone like that that's making real money, to be honest with you. I like clean, 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 and I'm probably one of the only people on the planet that if you took everything away from me, I could, I could still, I could still decide to trade. I could still, I could still look at something and decide what to do. If you mapped it out, and I just had the price to look at it. I could trade on the tape. That there's an old, old book. Gosh, what's it called? The Reminiscences of a Stockbroker. Old book, okay, from a hundred years ago. I could trade like that guy. He, him, and I would be best friends. Okay. The reality is, you got to learn how to read price and stop relying on indicators. Now, let me just look here. And some of these questions. There's just so many here. I think I'm, I'm missing some of them. Hold on. Do I sell winning stocks at the end of the month? I don't hold them overnight. So I'm not holding them overnight. Remember, I'm a day trader. I'm a day trader. I don't hold them anything overnight, okay? So it, that has nothing to do with what I do here. I'm out of this by the end of the day, okay? Now let's look at the new. So this morning, when you got up, you could have looked at the new before 9.30, you would have rated it using the 26-point rating system and decided you wanted to pick the new to watch to short. If you had done that, new set up to short. You would have shorted it right in here, put the stop, that's it. It fell off a planet. Boom. So you were in the stock here at 931 short. I'm on a one minute, and here it went. Fell more than a dollar right into this 940 period. You're in the trade for 10 minutes. That's it. Your day is done. You go home, go back to bed, go to the gym. Price of the entry is 46.75. Stop is over 47. Risk is 25 cents. On 300 shares, this is a beginner risk. I'm breaking it down into three parts here for everybody to see. You wouldn't make $100,000 risking $75 on the trade, but I'm just showing you for people who don't have the amount of money to take the risk. Someone had asked, how much money do you need? I'm just showing you 300 shares here. You would have made $300 on this trade today. Okay. 
$300 a day is $1,500 a week. $1,500 a week is $78,000 a year, okay? The risk to reward is four times the amount risk was made in profit, and the time in the trade was 10 minutes. Now, if you were an intermediate, you are looking to make, uh, you are looking to make as 100 grand a year, as much as you can, 130, $2,500 a week is your goal. You got this trade, you did everything right with the risk, you put the stop in, you took 1,000 shares, it was a good one for you, and it dropped a dollar. You made over $1,000 in 10 minutes. I call this a comma trade. The first time you ever trade and make this much money this fast, it's a feeling of exhilaration. It was years ago that I did it. I did it very quickly when I started out at the beginning. And, you know, it's one of these things that you fall in love with the market very quickly. So, well, I'm very passionate about the market and what I do in reference to trading because, because I make money in the market. And, and, and it's exciting. I, I can't say that it's ever not exciting. Like, I could say that it's not exciting some days because some days it seems like, you know, I wish the stocks would go more than they do. But then another two days will go by and I'll have a day that I make so much money so fast and I say, oh my gosh, I love this thing. Like, some days things go to the dream target. Some days they don't and I still make money. But I will tell you that the days where I make, you know, several thousand dollars in a span of less than 30 minutes, I... And it happens. It happens every, every, every month you get trades that you're like, oh, my Lanta. And you say, oh, this is why I do this thing. And towards the end, we're going to talk about some, you know, advanced risks. But it's, there's a feeling of exhilaration to be able to make this. You can't make this much money this quickly doing anything else on the planet. You just can't. You cannot. You cannot. And it's there immediately. Right there. It's in your account. Like, you can take it out tonight if you want. Tomorrow. Whenever. It's a feeling of exhilaration that I can't describe. And if you've never made this money this fast, you'll have to do it to know it. Now, here is an advanced one, actually. If you took 3,000 shares, you risk $750. Exits $45.75, total profits $3,000. I mean, this is like in 10 minutes. You could make $3,000. Now, I know you had to risk $750. And like I'm saying, this is an advanced risk. But it's like, you know, $3,000. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It, it just is, okay? $1,000 is a lot of money, and $3,000 is too, but to make this in 10 minutes is amazing, okay? Now, how does the time of day fit into it? It's very, very, very important. The time of the day has to do with precision and the focus, and that's how you're getting this kind of sell-off here like the new. Do you see the time of day for this? Like, I don't even know where the stock is right now. It's 115, but... I'm, I, I don't even know if this, this, is, this might have been the low of the day in this thing, okay? This all happened immediately. And if you waited till after 10 o'clock to short it, you didn't get this play. You didn't get the momentum. You didn't get the volatility and get this play into itself. Do you see here? Okay. Now let's go on. The market, okay? The market did fall today. The market did fall today and... You could have shorted the market today. Now, I did not, but you could have. Why? Because the market actually gapped down today. Remember, we're focusing on the strategy, which is gaps, and you're looking to short. So the market did gap down today and fell, and you could have rated the gap, and you could have shorted it if you wanted to today. Now, where would the entry have been? Similar, very early time frame. Right in here, you would have shorted it in this red bar in here. Time of the day you see here is 9.35. Boom. Within less than 20 minutes, you get the drop. And look at this. This is another dollar drop. Price of the entry is 105.45. Stop is over 105.65. Risk is great in this. 20 cents. On 1,500 shares, it's $300. This is an intermediate risk. This is the kind of risk you're going to need to take to make 100 grand a year. But this isn't insane, okay? Exits 104.45. Total profits $1,500. Risk reward is five times the amount risk was made in profit. Time and trade was 20 minutes. Okay. And again, if you're looking at buying power for this, you take, how do you figure out buying power? Is you take the price of the stock times the share size equals the buying power that you need available. Now, retail brokerage accounts also uh, look at a 30% amount to short that they'll add on to it. Just so you know that. Prop places, it's going to be what they give you. And again, you're going to have to talk to different brokers to find out the requirements of the actual amounts of cash they need to put up. But I will tell you with my system, if you have 100000 in buying power 
with my system, that is more than enough and plenty, plenty to do to do to do this, to trade like this. I mean, you will be able to take position sizes like this here, 1,500 shares of this. This, this. That's more than enough in most of the stocks to get the moves, okay? And so 100,000 buying power in a retail account means 25,000, just for example. And in a prop account, it's less. But that's more than enough. You don't need that much to day trade this system, but I'm saying if you want to know how you can make this kind of money over and over and over again, that is more than enough. That is plenty. You don't need some excessive amount. Okay? Now let's talk briefly here about something I've just started to do. I started to do this for myself, actually. I started to do this for myself because there was a gap. And you can go look at my YouTube videos. I did a play of the day video on this that happened within the last two weeks. I don't remember the date of it now. Uh, it was APOL. And... It was, an, it was just a huge, huge trade. And I sat down myself because I, I trade myself and I'm going to start to teach this to my students and I'm figuring out something called the millionaire map. How to make a million dollars day trading. So I've started figuring this out. And I worked on it for the purposes of that one trade after that happened. And I'm going to go over two examples here today and just the ones that we looked at. We're, we're talking today about making $100,000 in the market, but that's not the reason that I set out to decide to day trade. I wanted a new career. I did mortgages for a long time, and then I wanted a new career. So I wanted to make six figures a year to substantiate the current income I was making, which you know was way more than 100000 And as someone pointed out, you can barely live in Manhattan with that. So I'm, I'm trading for seven years. But I'm saying, though, that I really decided to trade because I wanted to make millions of dollars in the market. And I realized, since I've gone back and looked at some of these trades that I've done even in the last month that it is possible like right now and even without a crazy amount of money as far as cash or even buying power. Now I'm just going to show you here that same QQQ trade and now again this isn't making $100,000 a year. This is if you want to get to the point where you're making hundred grand a month. How are you at the point where you're making hundred grand a month? You need to have trades where you're making five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars in the trains or you have maybe like one big trade that where you were making like 20 some thousand in it or more. Anyways, the QQQ trade, if you took 5,000 shares, you would have had a risk of $1,000. Okay, this is not an intermediate risk. This is advanced risk. But, you know, a lot of us can afford to risk $1,000 in a trade. It was a good stop, 20 cents. You could have made $5,000 at trade set up today. The risk to reward is five. And again, you're in that trade in 20 minutes. $5,000 you could have made in 20 minutes. And this is something that I've started working on for myself here that I'm going to talk about more in the future. But it, I'm realizing that actually it is very possible to make a million dollars in the market as a day trader, even getting out and being flat. Now, you could have held a lot of these things in here for longer trades and made more money. I'm just not doing that right now. I like the day trading. I mean, that's just me. That's my personality. I like to take it, be in it, be have the money, be up, no, I'm out. But I'm just talking about straight day trading. I'm mapping this out for myself about how am I going to get there? How am I going to do it? How much BP do I need? And so on and so forth. And I sat down and worked on it for myself over the weekend after that APL trade because I'm like, this is, this is ridiculous. Like, this is like ridiculous ridiculously good. <laughs> Anyways, so here was the QQQs if you wanted to do this, if you had the buying power to take it. Now, the new today, you would have taken 5,000 shares, but you would have had to risk slightly more. The risk to make this kind of money is really over 1,000, anywhere between 1,000 and 1,500 when I was looking at it uh, over the weekend. Anyways, 1250 as a risk, you could have taken 5,000 shares of new and you could have made $5,000. Again, they dropped a dollar. It, it dropped a dollar. It dropped a dollar in 10 minutes. Okay? And these things happen. They happen all the time in the market. It's not like they don't happen all the time. They do. But it is because of the pick. It's because of the stock. It's because of the pick. It's because of the strategy and the gap. Now, how many gaps do you get per week? During its quarterly earnings season, three to five quality gaps or more per day. Okay. Now, during non-earning seasons, you may get three to five per week. So, in other words, during earnings season, which is coming up in April, you get three to five a day. 
I like to do one. I focus on the one. But if you get uh, more than one gap a day, you could do every one that you get. I like to focus on one. Sometimes I do two, but I really like to prefer to focus on one. A quality gap is one that rates high enough to trade based on the 26-point rating system, which is how I'm finding the picks. It's about having a plan of action for booking the money very quickly. And in order to make six figures a year, or any amount of money, quite frankly, in the market, you need the right business plan. Even, even the idea, the concept of making 40 grand a year, which was the smaller beginner uh, amount, you still need a trading plan. You still need a business plan. You still need a business plan for any amount of money that you want to make in the market. It's imperative. And the right risk to reward trades equals the results, which is you're not going to take a train and risk $300 to make 100 That's what I would consider a poor trade or a bad trade. Now you're up, but that's not the type of trades that I'm looking to take. Now, what is a good risk reward payout? One to three on the low end, four to six in the middle end, and eight to 10 on the high end. Now you don't get eight to 10 trades like this every single day, but you do get them in a month's span of time. This means for every dollar you risk, you should have a goal of a minimum of three. Now, does that mean that if you take a trade and you risk a dollar and make $2, or risk $100 and make $200, that that that's uh, that you should keep trading. No. Some days you'll take a trade, you're up two risk units, and the trade's at the target, and then you're out. But then the next day you may take it, and you may make four risk units, like the ones from today, and then on average. So you're looking on average to make three. Okay, this is an average. Also, there should be a potential for even more of a payout if the stock goes to the dream target, and that's where the 8 to 10 comes from, of where the bigger potential when the stocks go and they go to the bigger targets. So how much to risk per trade to make $100,000 is I was stating on average to make $100,000 per year as an annual income trading gaps. A normal risk unit of $250 per trade is suggested. Once a trader is experienced with the system and good at holding to targets, even using a $200 risk could achieve this goal. This is a conservative figure. Again, I showed you the examples from earlier today. $500 a day is over hundred grand a year. So if you want to really break it down, there's, you know, 52 weeks in a year, but there's some weeks that it's not going to trade as a holiday, a week between Christmas and New Year, for example. You're looking to make an average of about $500 a day for $400. But to be able to make even $39,000, you need a plan, a plan of action. I find that a lot of people that, are, that have, have something down as a plan that's a good strategy have the potential to make so much money. It's just that they don't stick to the plan or even have a plan, or maybe they have a plan, Maybe they have a money management plan, but they don't have a good strategy. So they have a money management plan, they have a great money management plan, but they can't find a way to use it profitably to make money in the market because the strategy, the trades that they're taking, the reason that they're taking them is poor. They're not taking the trades for good reasons. Like I'm taking a trade like new for a good reason. It gapped, it rated per the 26-point rating system. I'm looking to short it with an edge, okay? So I can teach you how to make this kind of money shorting if this is something that you want to learn how to do. I teach a class and I have a system. I devise a system myself. I've been doing it for seven years. It took me, well, it took me about three years to put the whole thing together from all the 26 points. The Golden Gap system is a 26 point professional bearish gap reading system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap or stock to trade each morning using the checklist. And that's how I get the picks so accurately. The Golden Gap course teaches a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. And I like to look at the short side. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock of the day to get good risk to reward trains into that period of the day. I also teach price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level, which is that you're, again, not relying on indicators. You can look at those things and have them on your charts, but you shouldn't be making decisions based off of that. The course teaches a more proficient way to read support and resistance in the right direction. A lot of people that train are using moving averages or other indicators to look at support and resistance. And actually, once again, you have to understand the concept of support and resistance, which I teach in the class. The course teaches you to focus on one strategy in a detailed manner so you can become a good trader. Ultimately, your goal should be that you want to be a successful trader. You, you, you want to make money. Okay, that's the reason that you want to do this thing in the first place. But if you are too short-sighted on the money and not focused enough on getting good, you're not going to get where you want to be. You're not going to get where you want to be to be able to make three, five thousand dollars in a trade, or even in one day, or even in one week, or even one month. Okay. So the so the goal has to be the focus on becoming a good trader. 
learning how to find the right pick, learning how to short, learning how to take the entry right, learning how to trade this time period in this time period that has that volatility, okay? And learning how to day trade and reprice accurately. So the Golden Gap rating system is a 26 point checklist. You just go down and you check it off. Boom, boom, boom. And you tally them up and you look for the pick that way. The philosophy behind the Golden Gap system though is I'm analyzing a large time frame, which is a daily chart, to make the trend decision on the directional bias for the gap, which is a strategy. All large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders, which is why one of the reasons why my system is so brilliant. I am making the decision on a larger time frame, which is what institutions use, but I am making the entry decisions and exit decisions based on a small time frame because I'm a day trader and I am not a hedge fund on the one minute chart, which has a high degree of focus and accuracy. Using the daily chart to make a decision for the stock pick allows for accuracy in the direction, which you need or you won't make money, okay? Using the one minute chart allows for good risk to reward trades with accuracy with the risk to reward, okay? Because we all have limitations as far as what we are using for cash balances and risk and buying power, okay? All of us, no matter what level we're on, no one has unlimited buying power wherever you're trading. To be successful as a trader, it is not about luck. It is a skill-based career. This is extremely important. All highly paid careers are skill-based. Physicians, physicians, attorneys, all of them. And you need to have the right skills and knowledge in order to succeed. The interesting thing about training is that people either, one, don't realize how important the right knowledge and skill set is before they risk money in a trade, or two, they think they have the right knowledge but really don't. I cannot believe how many people I talk to that think they know how to trade. But they're not making money, so they don't, okay? It's reflective of the fact that you do it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, January, February, March, April, May, all year long you do it. It's not just about having one profitable week or trade or day or month. You got to do it over and over and over and over and over again. Success in the market is about skill, not luck. You can have a great trade and you make a lot of money in it and it's just dumb luck. Actually, I don't really, I've never had that happen to me. Probably because the market forced me to learn how to do it, or I may not have forced myself to learn how to do it. But I will tell you, though, that it has never been about luck for me. It's always been about skill. I've never, like, taken a trade and gotten lucky. You create your own luck in the market by learning how to do it and gaining the right skill set to do it. And that's how you replicate it over and over and over and over and over, because you will not be successful if you cannot replicate it. Because ultimately, it's about the consistency. And that has to last you through all the market periods, whether the market period is bullish or bearish. And it has to be something that works in all time frames and over the long haul. Doesn't matter what the market's doing. So now, is the class beginner advanced? I always have this question too. The class is advanced. If you are new to trading, I've never traded before. I have top brand new people that have never traded before. I allow free retakes in my class. You can take it once you sign up for it the first time. You can take it, take it as many times as you want to for free afterwards. So if you're new, you may have to take it more than once. But it is definitely an advanced course. There is more than one step in the ladder for most people's journey. And I'm pointing this out because I know a lot of people have taken different classes or maybe traded on and off for years and they feel frustrated, discouraged by the process of the market or the idea of even making $100,000 a year. You have to, at some point, Decide that you want to get on the right path if you want to make it. If you're floundering around or doing a million different things or losing or not making money or don't have a positive attitude, you've got to step back sometimes, reevaluate, and get on the right path. And you've got to be honest with yourself and ask yourself, what is your current mindset? Because if you want to be successful, you do have to have a positive mindset. You can reset yourself to move forward at any point in time. You can do it right now, okay? Right now. Click like that. It's not something that has to take you umpteen days and months and years to reset to be successful. I've had people that have found me and come to me and they're losing. Uh, you know, so many stories I can tell you from so many clients, just even in the last three years that I've had the business, that, you know, have lost bucketfuls of money in the market and then they come to trade with me and all of a sudden I have nowhere they're profitable. Now, you can reset it at any time. Know that you can. Know that you can, and this is something that is very reasonable to do, even with a reasonable amount of risk. You have to take the money that you have and use it to work for you. And you can take the money that you have and open up an account and use it and build it. If you don't have what you think is enough to make XYZ, just make what you can. Risk what you can afford 
and build it up from there and leave the money sit. It is all about the mindset and you must be positive if you want to do it. Every time I take a trade of 100% conviction, it's going to work. Does that mean that every single trade I take is positive? No. Sometimes I have a losing day. It is not that often. When I do, it doesn't ever spiral out of control because I don't take that many trades on a day. I don't have that many things that I like as top picks. I'm very, very focused. So I don't have big down days ever because of the fact that I'm not taking that many trades. So it's actually very easy for me some days. I say, well, the stock doesn't work. I take a loss. I get up the next day. If I make three, four hours, I cover the loss from the prior day of the one hour loss, and then I'm still up for the two days. Okay? And over the course of a month, though, there's 20 trading days. You should be positive of those days, a good amount of the days. In other words, two to three days a month, you might take a loss, and the rest of the days, you should be positive. And that is what I would say is constitutes a good quality trader. So you have to be positive and have a good mindset when you're trading. It is all about the consistency. You're looking to get up every day and make money when you take the trade. You're looking to take a quality pick. You're looking to make three risk units. Some days you make two, two and a half. Some days you make five. It's on average about the consistency. You are chunking it out, and that is how you achieve these types of goals to be able to make six figures a year. Although every once in a while you do get a trade where you make an enormous amount of money in it, and those are great days. You never know when you're going to have them when they go to the dream target and you do have these eight, nine, ten hour days. They, it's fantastic when you have them and it's exhilarating and it is one of the things that drives me constantly to better myself and my own trading in the market. And that's why I started working on this new thing called the Millionaire Map because I'm, I'm excited about it. I see the potential now where my training has, is at such a high advanced level where I know that I'm, I'm, I'm going to be able to do it. I mean, I, I might even be able to start doing it next month. You know, I've been working on this now for the last, like, week for myself. But I will tell you that it doesn't take as much money as I thought that I was going to need. And I'm talking about making a million dollars a year now, not 100000 Okay? You've got to be positive, and you have to think like a successful person. If you are someone that is talking or around people that are bummers, that they're not, they're going to drain you. They're going to drain your energy. They're going to make you feel negative. You don't want to be around people like that. You want to be around positive, optimistic, successful people, people that are doing it. This is one of the reasons that I've been able to turn people into good traders because I'm successful and I'm very positive. And that rubs off on the people that come and learn from me and trade with me and the people that I mentor and take my class. If you are with someone that doesn't think positive and is not successful in their own right, okay, then it's going to be really tough for you to, to get good with them. I mean, you're going to have to overcome a lot of hurdles. So you've got to find a positive, successful person to be like, that you look up to, that you, that you uh, respect. Don't let anything stand in the way of your success. And ultimately, working for yourself brings a lot of personal freedom. Huge, huge advantage in reference to trading. So making $100,000 a year in the market is totally reasonable. Remember, you have to chunk it out. You have to chunk it out, chunk it out, chunk it out, chunk it out. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So empower yourself today to trade the market. If you're interested, I teach a class. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. It is a complete system to use to trade the market. I teach all the pieces of the puzzle in the class, how to find the right picks, how to take the entries, where the targets are. And the class is a full two-day course on how to strategically find pick and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Again, retakes are free online. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. The class dates are April 11th and 12th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $34.99. If you're interested in signing up, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Now, I do run a live trading room. It's called the Stock Swish Show Live Trading Room. And I'm offering a special offer for the Winvesting webinar today. For those of you that are interested in learning my gap rating system, I'm offering... If you sign up for the April Golden Gap class, you will receive the Wealth Manifestation course free. I'll talk about that in a moment. And you will also receive the Stock Swish Show live trading room free until Labor Day. That's Labor Day 2015. That's five months free in the live trading room to trade with me and get my calls live and take the trades with me. And the Wealth Manifestation class, this is a savings of almost $1,700. I've never offered five months free in the room before. This is huge. This means you trade all of second and third quarter earnings season with me. This, is, this encompasses two earnings seasons with me to trade gaps. And it's a savings of $1,700. I've never offered this much free time in the room. 
Dan asked me to offer something special for the webinar, so I'm doing it. You can sign up for this through Easter. Happy Easter, happy Passover, everyone. This offer is good through Sunday, April 5th at midnight, if you want to sign up. The class is April 11th and 12th, but this offer is only good through Sunday. Now, I'll talk a little bit about this class. This class uh, does not talk at all about charts, but I talk about some of the things I pinpointed on today, touched on today, but I talk about it in great detail. I talk about how your mind works. It is more than just a motivational class, though. I really actually talk about how your brain works in reference to making decisions about money and finance. And so it is a very strong, strong class that I find is very applicable to uh, helping you make money in your life, not just in trading, but in other things, particularly business as well. Now, earning season starts in April. Okay, second quarter earnings season, there will be a lot of gaps. As I said, there will be three to five a day at least or more in that period of the earnings season. I also teach another course for those people that are interested in, in longer-term trades or overnights. This is called the Trends course. This is for longer-term trends, a course on how to read trends in longer-term stock charts. It's April 23rd and 24th from 12 to 4 Eastern time. Cost of the class is $9.99. You can email me at melissatthestockswish.com if you want to sign up for this class as well. If you want to do both, okay, for April, you can do the Golden Gap class and the Trends class and save $500. The combo special is $39.99 for both. And if you sign up by Sunday, April 5th, you would get the Trends class, the Golden Gap class, the Wealth Manifestation class, and five months in the trading room until Labor Day 2015 for free. This saves you $2,100, this whole thing, if you get all the courses together and five months in the room. So this is just an amazing deal. And Dan wanted me to come up with something special, so there you have it. Don't forget the special Winvesting offer. And thank you so much for, for coming. Let me see if I have any questions here from anyone, anyone at all. And I'm not sure if I, I'm even looking at these questions right here. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for me or want me to go back? I'm trying to scroll back here and see. I have a few moments here to answer questions. Let me just say, hold on a minute, I'm scrolling back. One second. 26 things is a lot of things to check in a day, somebody said. It seems like a lot, but actually when you are in the morning and you're prepping, okay, if you're prepping in the morning, it doesn't take you that long. At the beginning when you are actually brand, brand new, it may take you, you know, seven, eight minutes to rate a gap, okay, and fill out the worksheet. But once you're doing it and over and over every day, it should take you, you know, two, three minutes, okay? So it seems like it's going to take you a long time, but not really. And you're also not rating 100 things. You're, you're really not rating uh, 100 things, okay? You're only rating, you're gathering a, a watch list together, okay? And then you're rating the watch list together. You're, you're, you're not getting up in the morning and rating 100 different stocks. You're going to make a watch list of them on this, from the scanner, and then you're going to go through and rate them. And that's how you're going to do it. It doesn't take that long. It sounds like a lot of things to look at, but it doesn't take you that long to do it once you learn the system. Let me just go back here and see. Do I use limit or sell at the market and rebuy? I lose limit orders always. And I use limit orders with a cushion of three pennies. And I use hotkeys. Yes, someone asked again about the options. Yes, you can use the rating system for the options. Some stocks it will make a lot of sense in and will be less expensive. Some it won't make sense in, though. Okay, You have to look at it for the cost of the price of the option. And if you want to do the option, you would have to actually know how to take the option because I'm not going to teach you how to take the option trade, if that makes sense. I think I've gotten through most of these here. Does anyone else have anything else? I'm not sure if I'm seeing the current questions here, if I'm just scrolling back now. Actually, it looks like the last question was a few moments ago. If anyone has any questions or needs anything else, 
If I didn't get to any all, all the questions here, I apologize. My chat's very small to scroll up. But if you have any other questions or you're interested in the GAT course, you can always email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Okay? All right, great, everyone. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. All right, Melissa, thank you very much. That was a fantastic presentation. The uh, the only question I saw, I think, uh, that a, a lot of people asked was um, how much uh, in capital, how much do they need in their accounts to be able to trade your system? Are you, can everybody hear me? There, I just put the mic back on. As far as the question of the capital, if you want to make $100,000 a year, that's what I'm saying, my advice to you is to have buying power which you would get from the broker or what is called leverage, okay, of uh, between 75000 and and 100000 buying power. Now, as far as the cash amount that you need to put up with the broker to get that type of VP or leverage, it depends on the type of broker you would choose. There are two different types of brokers. You can go to a retail broker, in which case your leverage will be 4 to 1, or you can go to a proprietary day trading account brokerage place of which there's millions out there and you would need less money with that type of place you have to talk to them if they're going to give you a buying power of 5 to 1 or 8 to 1 or 10 to 1 or 20 to 1 many of them do give different buying powers with a retail account it's just a straight 4 to 1 for day trading but if you have a broker that gives you 75 to 100,000 in leverage to take the cost position of the stock, that's more than enough to make this type of money, 100000 a year. The advanced risk, you're going to need more than that. But I don't think anyone should be concerned about that until you get good at, at doing this. Again, it has to do with the fact that you have to prove that you can do it. You've got to be able to make $1,500 a week before you can make $2,500 a week. You've got to be able to make $2,500 a week before you can make $5,000 a week and you're making $25,000 a month. So you you got to be able to get step it up each point along the way. So start with what you have right now. Contact both those types of brokers and then find out if you can afford to open up an account at a retail place or a prop place. Prop places will take people with an account as little as $2500. You know, I don't know what kind of buying power they're going to give you for that though. I'm just giving you the guide for the buying power positions for the prices of the stocks you want to take. And really, usually most of the stocks that I trade are under $65 a strike price. Now, the Q's in there example is over $100 a share, but I really trade in a range, I'd say, from $5 to $65. I get the best moves and things, like I talked about the APOL, which actually is around a $20, $25 price point, and even the HPQ was like $30 something. Those, those price range stocks between $20 and $30, I find I have the biggest moves, the best entries for risk to reward. I love trading stocks at that price point. So they're not most of the stocks I trade are actually not that expensive. But I'm giving you a guide, a guideline for yourself, uh, and 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 that's the guide. Okay, can you go back to your slide that had the combo price? We did have one question about um, if the room was available separately, but I believe uh, well, I'll let you answer that. A couple people asked about the room. Yes, I do have people ask about the room now and then. Particularly, I have people ask about the room, which is interesting. Some people that ask about it are really new. And then I have people that ask about it that have been trading for years. They just want to join the room. I don't offer the room unless you take the Golden Gat class. You can trial the room. If you want to email me for a trial, I do offer a one-week trial. You can come in the room and trial the room for a week. I actually have had people that have trialed the room and made the money for the class in the on the trial. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to do that because if you... Uh, you know, are brand, brand new to GAP, so I think you need to just observe. But I do have people that are ready with traders that come in, take the trial, make the money for the class in the week trial. But I do offer a one-week trial. You cannot sign up for the live trading room unless you've taken the Golden Gap course. Again, it has to do with the fact that I am teaching people how to be good traders. I believe that longevity and success in the market has to do with learning what to do. These trades set up sometimes at 9.31. And I want people to make money with me. 
At 931, that means the market's been open for 60 seconds. You got to learn how to take those trades. I'm not, I don't want to be throwing people into the market at 931 with me that don't know how to do that. And you learn how to do that in the class. So it's to your best interest to actually take the course and learn it. And quite frankly, if you are committed to being a successful trader to doing this, whether it's part-time or full-time, you will have no issue with taking the class. And when people ask me about the price, my class is 100% worth the price of this. People make money trading with me in my room. It is unheard of in this industry, but I have accomplished that. And, you know, again, I'm just very, very good at what I do. I will say, though, that it's one of these things where you have to be committed. And, it, and if you cannot afford to take the class, then I don't, I don't believe that you should be trading the market. And that's my honest answer. Wait, save up the money until you're ready, until you have enough money to trade. I want people to be able to afford to trade. In order to make money in the market, you have to take risk. Whether it's $50 or $150 or $350, you have to be able to take risk. The only way you can make money is taking risk. It should be calculated risk, but you learn how to do that in the class. So I love the fact that so many people want to join my room. I know people come to the trials and they want to join my room, just join the room. But you've got to take the class to join the room as a full-time member. I do not make any exceptions. If you want to trial the room, I'd love to have you there for a one-week trial. You can email me at melissathestockswish.com for the trial. I am off this week for the rest of the week for the holiday. But next week, I could have people in for the trial. Okay, great. So, uh, Melissa, thank you again. Uh, I know we, we started a little bit late, but I really appreciate uh, your sticking with us. And uh, that was a, a really good, uh, a, a fantastic uh, presentation. I think uh, a lot of people got a lot out of it. So a lot of great questions. Um, if we are running a little bit late, so unfortunately we don't have time for any more questions right now. But if you do have any more, uh, Melissa has been very clear. Please email her at melissa at the stock swoosh dot com and i copy that into the chat box i'll do it again here real quick just to make sure in case it's scrolled off your screen there uh it's melissa at the stock uh she'll be happy to answer whatever other questions uh that you have that uh she didn't get a chance to get to right now again that's our fault for, uh, for running a little bit late so i apologize for that so melissa thank you again and uh I look forward to talking uh talking to you again soon